I'm going to talk about oxidation numbers now and the idea is to be able to assign oxidation numbers to atoms in elements and compounds I'll show you what I mean by that if you have something like sodium sulfate Na2SO4 you we should be able to work out what the oxidation number is of the sodium of the sulfur and of the oxygen in sodium sulfate so that's the idea there and that other thing is to use Roman numeral to indicate the oxidation state so if you have something like iron 3 chloride these Roman numerals the 3 chloride we're going to find out what that means we have to start off with a definition now now an oxidation number is defined as a measure of the number of electrons that an atom uses to bond with atoms of another element okay so it's a measure of the number of electrons that an atom uses to bond with atoms of another element. Now we have some rules for working out oxidation numbers. The first number is in an uncombined element, the oxidation number is zero. So for instance, in oxygen, O2, the element oxygen, the oxidation number of each atom of oxygen is zero. In nitrogen, N2, that's zero also. Sodium, it's sodium metal by itself, non-combined is zero and the same for carbon. So any element, it's going to be zero. The second rule is combined oxygen is always negative two, always minus two. So if we had, for example, CO2, the oxygen in CO2, the oxidation number will always be negative two. Similarly for NO2, the oxidation number is always negative two. And even in nitrogen monoxide, the oxidation number is minus two, including H2SO4, the oxygen, atoms in there the oxidation number is negative two combined hydrogen is always plus one an example of this will be the acids hydrochloric acid HCl uh, what else have we got oh yes we'll have H2O in water the oxidation number will be plus one for the hydrogen the oxidation number for the hydrogen in nitric acid HNO3 will be plus one also the fourth rule is simple ions the oxidation number will be equal to the charge of the iron so for instance in sodium chloride the sodium is, is Na plus one plus the oxidation number will be plus one notice the oxidation number is the other way around to the charge you would say one plus for the charge for the oxidation number you would say plus one so similarly for chlorine which is minus one as the oxidation number because it has a one negative charge so for simple ions the oxidation number is going to be the same as the iron the fifth rule is combined fluorine is always negative one so anything that's got a fluorine not, not as the element F2 but as an actual compound for instance hydrogen fluoride the fluorine is going to be negative one, the oxidation number. Now we can look at applying some of these rules now to some examples to work out oxidation numbers. And we'll start off with sulfur trioxide, which is SO. sulfur trioxide do you want SO3 now the way to work that out you take each of the atoms and you put them in a column notice that SO3 has no overall charge it's a neutral molecule it doesn't have a charge overall so there's no charge up there SO3 it, there's no charge and that's important in working out the oxidation numbers so we put the elements the atoms that are in there SO3 1s three oxygens we put them in a column the overall charge in this case is zero because it's a neutral molecule it hasn't got a charge so zero so all our oxidation numbers must add up to zero for all the atoms in so3 now if we go back to our rules combined oxygen as in so3 is always negative two so i'll just highlight that combined oxygen is always negative two so where i've got those three oxygen atoms each one of those will have 
an oxidation number of negative 2. Negative 2, negative 2, negative 2. I need to get an overall charge of 0. So I must give sulfur a value which will give me a value of 0 overall. So I need it to be plus 6 because plus 6, take away 2, take away 2, and take away another 2 is 0. So that's how I can assign an oxidation number of 6 plus 6 for sulfur. Now we can look at sulfur dioxide this time. Sulfur dioxide again is a neutral molecule, it has no charge. So no overall charge for sulfur dioxide. We put the atoms in a column again, S and two O's. Rule applies, negative 2 for each oxygen, and the overall charge, because it's a neutral molecule, will be 0. So we'll have negative 2 for each of the oxygens, and it must add up to 0, so therefore, in this case, our sulphur must be plus 4. So the oxidation number of sulphur is plus 4, oxygen is negative 2. This time we will look at a charged iron, molecular iron. In this case it will be SO4 to minus. Now this is the kind of thing you get in sulfuric acid where you have H2SO4. You get the sulfate iron. We do the same as before, put the sulfur and four oxygens in one column. Now in this case we do have an overall charge of two minus. Do notice that the charge, you have the number first. Whoops, not like this. You have the number first and then the sign. So actually it's two negative. Let's go back there, yeah. So our overall charge should be two negative, not negative two for the charge. Oxidation numbers, the sign comes first, then the number. So. Applying our rules, oxygen is minus 2, always minus 2, so we just put minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. Now it must add up in total to 2 minus. Therefore our sulphur must be plus 6, because plus 6, take away 2, take away 2, take away 2, and take away another 2, will give me 2 negative. That's how you work out oxidation numbers. Now I'm going to go over what I mean when I say about the Roman numerals, what they mean. So we'll start off with iron 3 chloride. The 3 is in the Roman numerals there. Now those Roman numerals will give me the oxidation number for iron. So if in iron 3 chloride the oxidation number will be plus 3 because that's what the Roman numerals mean of 3. Therefore we will have FeCl3 because it will be Fe3 plus with 3 chlorine, 1 negative, to balance it out. If we looked at iron 2 chloride, the oxidation number of iron in iron 2 chloride will be 2, so therefore I would need FeCl2, because it will be Fe2 plus, and then I'll need 2 Cl minuses to balance it out. And we've got a problem here, what is the oxidation number of the elements in chlorate 3 which has an overall charge of 1 negative. So chlorate 3 iron with an overall charge of 1 negative. What are the oxidation numbers? Well the 8 here means that the chlorine will be bonded with oxygen because the 8 means oxygen, is similar for when you have sulfate, it means the sulfur's with oxygen. Or when you've got nitrate, NO3 minus, the nitrogen is with oxygen, the 8 means oxygen. So we know that the chlorine is bonded with oxygen, we don't know how many oxygen atoms there are yet. Now we know the overall charge is 1 negative. We know that the chlorine is plus 3, because that's the Roman numerals. Oxygen is always negative 2. 
So in order to get that overall charge of negative one negative, we need to have two oxygens at minus two oxidation number, which will give us overall overall a formula of CLO2 one negative.